Hi, I'm Dave Pierce, Director of NASA's Wallops Flight Facility. This is an exciting time for all of us who are devoted to aerospace and space exploration, and especially the team located at NASA's Goddard's Wallops Flight Facility here on the Eastern Shore. Thank you for joining us today for our live broadcast as we have an exciting mission for the National Reconnaissance Office, launching from the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport. At Wallops, we are proud to provide assured launch range services to meet the government and commercial sector needs for accessing flight regimes worldwide from the Earth's surface to the moon and beyond. As today's mission shows, Wallops serves as a unique national asset. Our facility is in a geographical location ideal for conducting launch, mission operations in support of NASA science, technology, exploration, as well as support for the Department of Defense operations, while also serving as an economic engine by enabling commercial space in our country. Regardless of where you're tuning in from, we're honored that you're taking time to join us virtually at Wallops as we support this important national security mission. And now, I invite you to sit back and take in the launch experience as we continue the count for today's mission. Good morning. We are T minus 28 minutes, 43 seconds, and counting for the launch of Northrop Grumman's Minotaur 1 rocket for the United States Space Force, carrying three national security satellites for the National Reconnaissance Office, or NRO. Launch today is scheduled for 9.35 a.m. Eastern Time. We've had uh, this morning, and it has been an eventful morning here at Wallops uh, with uh, various uh, storm cells moving through the area, uh, originally targeting 7 a.m. for launch. Uh, however, we have uh, had lightning, and again, as I mentioned, storm cells moving through, so uh, that's been an issue with us this morning. Uh, and we will continue to, to monitor that. Right now, we're at 70 percent go weather-wise for launch uh, with uh, cloud ceilings as we have another one of the low cloud decks uh, moving through the area right now. This mission named NRO-L111 is NRO's second dedicated launch from Wallops in the last 12 months. The NRO is an intelligence community element and Department of Defense organization responsible for developing, acquiring, and launching operating America's reconnaissance satellites as well as operating associated data facilities in support of national security. Now let's learn a little more about NRO. This year, the National Reconnaissance Office celebrates 60 years since its founding. Thanks to our heritage, NRO today has an unrivaled constellation of reconnaissance systems that help protect our nation 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In celebration of our 60th anniversary, NRO has planned a year-long program throughout 2021 to highlight the key events, people, and innovations that shaped our past, present, and future. Follow us on social media for more 60th anniversary content. When we think about satellites today and near real-time digital data, it's hard to believe the first overhead reconnaissance efforts relied on camera film and balloons. The earliest film return reconnaissance efforts in the mid-1950s involved the U.S. Air Force launching high-altitude balloons over denied areas to take pictures. The Air Force then retrieved the balloons from mid-air. Reconnaissance went a step further once film was ejected from a satellite back to Earth, again requiring elite U.S. Air Force personnel to recover the film capsules. These early film vehicle captures are so important that we've hung examples in the NRO headquarters lobby. Another interesting point about our legacy is that NRO has always been both a member of the IC and the DOD. On September 6th of 1961, CIA and DOD signed an agreement to form the jointly managed National Reconnaissance Office. For six decades, we've worked with our DOD and IC partners to deliver critical intelligence to policymakers and warfighters worldwide. We're excited to launch from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility for the second time in 12 months, and we look forward to more opportunities to launch from Virginia's Space Coast. NROL 111 represents not just years of planning for this mission, but a six-decade legacy of advancing the nation's reconnaissance capabilities. When the nation needs eyes and ears where no other collectors can reach, it turns to the NRO.
As mentioned, this launch is being conducted by the United States Space Force and Space Missile Systems Center's Launch Enterprise. It is the third small Space Force mission from Wallops in the past year. Previous launches were a Minotaur 4 mission in July 2020 and a sounding rocket mission earlier this year in March 2021. The Minotaur today will launch from the Virginia Space Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport, or MARS, Pad 0B on the south end of Wallops Island. Minotaur rockets have been launching from this pad for 15 years. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dale Nash, and I'm the CEO and Executive Director of Virginia Space. We own and operate the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport called MARS. I'm incredibly excited to welcome you to Mars for the NRO L-111 mission, which will be launching on a Northrop Grumman Minotaur-1 rocket from our Mars Pad 0B. I want to thank Northrop Grumman and Wallops, without whom we would not be able to do this launch. It's a very strong and collaborative public-public-private partnership that has uh, gone on for several years. It also marks the ever-growing relationship between Virginia Space, the NRO, and the United States Space Force. Through privilege that Mars has been selected, contribute to this mission, which has allowed us to play a critical role in strengthening our nation's security and aerospace capabilities. This is our second launch from Pad B for the NRO and Space Force, and we certainly hope to partner with them many times in the future. In fact, the Wallops Aerospace Industry Cluster consisting of NASA Wallops, Wallops Island tenants, including Virginia Space, and corporate entities such as Northrop Grumman have had a remarkable economic impact, providing $1.37 billion annually to the local economy and county. All of this makes for a very exciting day for Mars and its partners. We're thrilled to help make L-111 the latest entry in our history of successful launches. And I couldn't be prouder of what we've accomplished through the hard work of our team and partners with the NRO and SMC. It's only through these combined efforts that we have been able to make this happen. Again, these launches are so important to our national security and I and our entire team are very proud to be part of this mission. Here we are, T-minus 21 minutes and counting for the launch of today of the Minotaur-1 rocket for the NROL-111 mission. Launch today is a 69-foot tall Minotaur-1 launch vehicle. It consists of two solid-fueled motors from decommissioned Minuteman ICBMs as the lower stages and two solid-fueled commercial solid rocket motors as upper stages. NRL-L-111 is the second Northrop Grumman orbital launch from the Mars launch pads in 2021. Earlier, earlier this year, they also launched an Antares rocket carrying cargo supplies to the International Space Station. The Minotaur product line came about an idea from the Air Force, which was to take decommissioned 
rocket motors from uh, the ICBM fleets. Uh, they were decommissioned by uh, START Treaty, other treaties, and repurposed them for space launch use. And so the, the Air Force uh, awarded a contract uh, to Northrop Grumman to take these motors and make space launch vehicles out of them. Sounds easy, but, uh, but it's, it's quite a bit of work. Um, you know, we need to take, we need to understand everything about these propulsion units, these, these rocket motors, how they, how they work, how much energy is in them, how to steer them, how to control them. And then we put uh, modern avionics on top. So that's, that's how we developed the Minotaur program, it's how we execute it, and that's how we, we got to the excellent uh, uh, success rate that we have, uh, which is 27, 27 out of uh, 27 launches were fully successful. I think the value to the government is to take these, these uh, retired motors um, and adapt them for, for other uses uh, rather than have to destroy them. Um, uh, these motors have also already been paid for by the taxpayer, and so repurposing them uh, provides a lower cost mission uh, for the Space Force. The Minotaur product line uh, has had a variety of different uh, uh, customer payloads uh, from NASA, uh, spacecraft that went to the moon, uh, to uh, test, uh, space test program satellites that test out new technologies, to meteorological and climate satellites, uh, to, to also operationally responsive satellites. So all 27 were fully successful. We're really proud of that. That's the result of a lot of hard work by a lot of people. The, uh, the Minotaur that we're gonna use for this upcoming uh, NRO L111 mission is a Minotaur 1. And so that's uh, a Minuteman, first two stages of a Minuteman ICBM. And then on top of it is Orion 50 XL and an Orion 38 stage. So it's a four stage solid vehicle. We put our avionics section on the front of that and that's all new built modern avionics. Uh, and then we have the composite structures including the payload fairing that encapsulates uh, the space vehicles on the front. Um, and so that's a configuration we've launched uh, 12 times and uh, we're really excited to be launching out of uh, Wallops Pad 0B for the L111 mission. So we're current come up, coming up on T minus 17 minutes and 30 seconds and counting. At T minus 16 minutes, we have scheduled our launch readiness poll, which is uh, one of the final checks to make sure everybody's ready for launch. All stations report go. VM? VM is go. PLC? PLC is go. PCC? PCC is go. DC? DC is go. FTS? FTS is go. TLM? TLM is go. GNC? GNC is go. ME? ME is go. OPS? OPS is go. CE? CE is go. NGMM? NGMM is go. GSO? GSO go. FSO? FSO, go pending, data review of the arm in Cucina. Copy. RSO? RSO, go pending the same. NASA PM? NASA, go pending, safety go. NG? NG is go. MD? MD is go. NASA TD? TD, go pending, RSO. Copy. G 
check step 58, go pending. Standing by step 14. Today's launch is dedicated to the memory. That's a go. T-minus 14 minutes and counting, RSO verify hazard area and caution area and impact limit lines are clear for launch. RSO, did you copy? GMC report status of wind data. Upper level RSO did not copy. RSO, verify the hazard area, caution area and impact limit line are clear for launch. RSO has areas clear. Check step 59, check step 60. Standing by, T minus 12 minutes and counting. LCTD archives check, signal confirmed at 131201. TD is go. Copy that, sir. Complete, complete step 16, standing by step. 61 and 30 seconds. LC CD1, T minus 12 minutes and counting. VC set flight computer launch time. Flight computer launch, launch time set to year 2021, day 166, hour 13, minute 35, second 00, zero UTC. Check step 12 VM confirmed, flight computer launch time. Flight computer launch time confirmed. Check step 62, standing by T minus 10 minute limit checks. And this is just a reminder, reminder that there is some latency in the stream from actual events here at Wallop. So uh, if you take that into account, if you're outside trying to, uh, to watch the launch and listening to the count.
LC CD1, T minus 10 minutes and counting. DLC, verify T minus 10 minute. Limit checks are go. Limit checks are go. Check step 63. FTS, switch FTS A and B, internal power on. FTS internal power on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. Batch command proceeding. Copy. Internal power is on. Check step 64. FTS switch FTS A and B external power off. FTS external power is off. Check 65. DLC evaluate FTS A and B voltage and current. Proceeding. Copy. FTS internal power nominal. Check 66 FSO, send arm command for two second duration and continue tone four. This is FSO, arm on my mark, three, two, one, mark, plus one, plus two, function removed, tone four continued. Check 67, DLC verify receiver arm indication. FTS arm indication verified. Check 68, PCC activate FTS arm enable. FTS arm enable. Check 69, FTS enable FTL U, A, and B. FTLU A and B enabled. Check 70, DLC, verify FTLU A and B enabled and no command destructs. FTLU A and B enabled, no command destructs. FSO, verify FTLU A and B enabled and no command destructs. This is FSO, FTLU A and B enabled, no command destructs. Check 7172, FTS, arm FTS A and B safe arms. FTS arm on my mark, three, two, one, Mark, batch command sent, FTSs are on. Okay. Check 73, BLC, verify FTS safe and arm indication. FTS safe and arm switches armed. FSO, verify FTS safe and arm indication. FTS arm. FSO, verify FTS is go. Stand by. PCC, apply avionics external power for the following systems. Proceeding. Copy. O38 and O50 ACUs on external power. Check 77, PCC evaluate power bus voltage and current. FSO, verify FTS is go. This is FSO, FTS is go. Copy, check 71, 4, 5, and 6. This is PCC, external power nominal. Check step 78, LTM, verify SV is on internal power. SV on internal power. Check 79. T minus seven minutes counting. LC CD1, requesting final authorization for launch. MD? Go. And that's a TD. TDs go. Check 80. FTS, start LAV DEWEY. PCC, started. enable ground ordinance. Check 81. Ground ordinance enabled. Check 82. LC FSO, break break. Copy. Go FSO ahead. is red. We're not seeing safe and arm indication on our displays. Copy that. Are you seeing it on your display, VM? VM is seeing it, yes. Copy that. You've got 30 seconds. Any, any update on your displays? FSO. This is FSO, no change. Our telemetry data shows that um, it is still safe. Is there a way to rotate it? FSO, which IDAN, do you have any idea which IDAN you're looking at? Stand by one. 
ACC, switch avionics internal power on. Avionics internal power on, on my mark in three, two, one, mark. Internal power on. Check 83, PCC, switch avionics external power off. External power off. Check 84, and we're acknowledging FSO is still red. PCC, power on VDM. Proceeding. EDM power on. Check 85, PCC, enable ordinance PTMs. Ordinance PTM power on. Check 86, VC, enable flight computer auto sequencer, start. Auto sequencer enabled. Check 87. DM, verify orb nav has been in gyro compass for at least 30 minutes. T minus orb four, BLT, verify T minus four minute limit checks are go, checks 88. Limit checks are go. Check 89. BC, command orb nav to navigate mode. Orb nav commanded to navigate. Check 890, VM, verify orb nav and nav mode. Orb nav in nav mode. Check 91, FTS, power on, NCU cart. NCU electronic power on. Check step 92, NASA TD, report range green. FSO, repeat, report range green. Range is green. Copy that, check step 93, standing by T minus two minute limit checks. And FSO, can you report you were, you removed green. your red copy, thank you. Minus two minutes and 30 seconds of counting. LCCD1, VM, verify auto sequencer started. Auto sequencer started. BLC, verify T minus two minute limit checks are go. Limit checks are go. PCC, activate arm enable. Arm enabled. PCC, arm ODMs. ODMs armed. PCC, arm Orions. Orions armed. PCC, arm boosters. Boosters armed. Copy that. Standing by step 100 at T minus five zero seconds. T minus 60 mark. FTS hydraulic on. Hydraulic on. NCU go. Copy. PCC activate NCU batteries. Proceeding. Batteries activated. Copy. FTS carts off. Carts off. Batteries go. Copy. BMs go for launch. Copy, checks. T minus 10. Five, mark, four, three,
three, two, one. Stage one set, stage two ignition confirmed. Motor nominal. Vehicle flight path and attitude are nominal. avionics and power system are performing as expected. Vehicle flight path and attitude are nominal. Approaching stage two burnout, vehicle is now one quarter its original mass. Burnout confirmed. Turn him off. And this concludes today's coverage of the Minotaur 1 NRL L111 mission launched at 9.35 a.m. Eastern Time. Mission information, including photos, will be available on the NRO, NASA, Wallops, and other ground websites and their respective Facebook and Twitter accounts. The next launch from Wallops is a NASA Terrier improved Ryan suborbital sounding rocket carrying the Rock On educational payload. Launch is scheduled for 8 a.m. Thursday, June 24th. Thanks for joining us today.